I'd like to call to order this uh, business meeting of District 116 for August 21st, 2018. Roll call, please. Member Carter. Here. Member Hall. Here. Member Pulaski. Here. Member Fisher is here. Vice President Rollins Gay here. and President Dennett. Here. Quorum is present. Um, do we have any additions, corrections, modifications? To no, we do not. All right. Uh, we will have an exec session after tonight's uh, current meeting uh, for purposes of personnel. It will be, uh, there'll be no action following the meeting. Um, we need then a motion to approve the agenda. <laughs> so move, second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign, motion's carried. Uh, citizen statements, any citizen wish to address the board this evening? If anyone wishes to, please turn in a goldenrod sheet. Uh, and it looks like Lori is doing double duty running the cameras tonight uh, since uh, school's just getting started. Uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, any citizen wish to address the board? Uh, seeing none, uh, we have no commendations or recognitions this evening unless you want to talk about it. Sure. Um, so at last week's board meeting, I appreciate you letting me just jump in here at this, even though it's not on the printed agenda, but at last week's board meeting, we uh, made accommodation and recognition of um, our high school uh, history teacher, Mr. Mark Foley. Um, and Mark Foley, is a, as we all said, and he was here in person, um, received the Gilder Lehrman Illinois History Teacher of the Year. And I just got an email today uh, from Gilder Lehrman, and he is one of top 10 finalists for National History Teacher of the Year. So. Um, I thought about making him come back and uh, and you know do his piece again, but um, but I figured that today's uh, first day of school uh, for all high school students, and so I would I would give him the uh, the benefit of the doubt. So he he did get an email from me, uh, shared it with the whole high school staff. I'm sure he's getting lots of congratulations. Good, good. All right, uh, no public hearing tonight. Uh, communications. So this was one um, that in talking to board members and we had some discussion about this item last year, um, I think uh, you mentioned, John, that it's one that has rarely been used and when it's been used, it has not been used consistently. And so as we've been working through um, kind of cleaning up our agenda and working on getting agenda processes, um, you know, uh, more streamlined in my office, I decided, well, let's put that on there because there are a couple different ways that we could use that and I want some direction from the board. This is a board meeting, so it's your agenda. I want to get some feedback and direction from you. Um, I do not believe that your feedback or discussion needs an action to give me direction on your agendas, but I want to know what, what you want to do. Um, a couple things that I gave to you just as, as um, as highlights, it's actually uh, 2 colon 140. The second page of that sheet is communications to and from the board. Um, and just a couple things that, you know, as, as I think this board is very aware and, and does a very good job of, you welcome communications from staff, parents, students, and community members. Uh, individuals may submit questions or communications uh, for the board's consideration to the superintendent or may use an electro electronic link on to the board's email addresses that is posted on the district's website um, in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the oath of office, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, board members will not reply to an email on behalf of the entire board or engage in the discussion of district business with the majority of board members um, or board quorum, I should say. So with that being said, um, the skipping down a little bit, it says board members questions or communications to staff about programs uh, will be channeled through the superintendent's office and board members will not take individual action that might compromise the board or district. That's not the important part. Um, but there's no expectation of privacy for any communication sent to the board or its members, whether sent by letter, email, or other means. One of the things that we've talked about doing, um, and when I say we, myself and individual board members, not as a collective, which is why I'm putting it out here in the open forum, is using this one of two ways. One is we could do this as a collection of emails. So if we have emails that come to the board, rather than me responding and, and notifying the board of how I responded uh, to individual concerns, we bring those and we present them publicly. 
Um, another thing that we could do, and this is something that um, that is another possibility, is when we have public comment, the board has a um, kind of uh, policy and procedure of not responding and not engaging uh, to public comment. We could use this spot here as a time to respond. Um, and so I just wanted I wanted to pose those ideas and just have you give uh, me and my administrative team some guidance on this. Yeah, I thought about this a little bit. Um, board communications has been on there since I got on the board, which I have to admit is before I used email. I think before the majority of the country used email um, in the 80s. Uh, and um, so some t we would get a letter and nobody would send out seven copies. They'd give one letter and then we'd pass it around. We'd s in the day and age of electronic communications, you know, you can send the same thing to more than one person. I think that's why it's fallen into disuse, is that the technology for communicating with the board is, has eclipsed um, why this was on the agenda in the first place. But sometimes we do get letters from um, uh, the state or something like that, and, and this is the, I see that this is, would be the appropriate time to notify the public about communications that we've gotten in that format. Um, that initial observation. Board comments about uh, Don's ideas? Discussions? Want to build on that? I had um, actually, and Don, you'll have to refresh my memory because it's been since last week, but I remember we were talking about it and I had asked, what can we do with communications or responses that we get when people make public comment? That's not a time for us to make a, a response. You know, we're not allowed to. But is there ever a time when it would be appropriate to use this part of the agenda to address a comment that somebody brought up to us at a previous meeting in any way? I mean, it, it could be something good. It could be a question they've asked and we say, well, you know, we, we want to go back and do research on it or something or they have a proposal or something. Could we in any way establish a way to address it that way or is that violating policy of some sort no. Oop, sorry no that's not violating policy uh, I like the idea of, of of it not being in a response to what was just delivered to us two minutes beforehand because um, uh, uh, we want to make sure that that any response we provide is well thought out mm -hmm. and, uh, is accurate and is, has the opportunity to research. So the idea of bringing back the following meeting, I think, is a... Um, or any subsequent meeting. It wouldn't have to be the very next yeah. one if it's something that requires a bit more thought. But it just always seems to me that sometimes when people make comments to us and that they're, they're looking to us for an answer and we can't give them the one, and then they walk away feeling like, oh, what did I just come here for, you know? And, I mean, it, not every single time a person makes a public comment would it be appropriate for us to use this. But the, I've thought of a few in the past couple, few years that people have made questions of us and I've thought, oh, you know, we can go back and talk about this and make, give a board response to it. It's just one thought. I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that, too. Okay. Yeah. That's not too bad. The only thing that we have, we won't know until it starts to happen uh, during citizen statements and whatever is just what's on the public's agenda and again we would have to defer you know we'd like to come back to the next meeting be able to speak to that or that person might want Don or you to get a hold of them just with an email um, I had another thought it's starting to go away hold on a second uh, and also there are lots of times when uh, cit citizen statements are about something that's already on our agenda. So at some point we could have just, you know, not do the communication thing and say so, me so much of what you brought to us this evening we're going to discuss here on the agenda in a little while. So that we make sure that we're not double dosing, sort of, you know, we'll kind of police ourselves on doing something like that. Because yeah. our, a lot of organizations' uh, agendas are generally, you know, part of what we do and then business 
and then there's old business. And we never really revisit anything. So I'm liking that maybe at the next meeting, like what you're saying is, we'll have an answer to something and we'll go ahead and share it with the public because that's where we heard it from, was here from like a citizen statement. So that works out well. Part of our communications too is sometimes when we're getting thank you notes, things like that that we're passing around here when something's happened, you know, in the community or somebody's just loving something that we did. We do get, we do sit here and sometimes the public will see us shuffling stuff mm -hmm. around and they generally don't know what it is we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not passing the hat or anything like that, but you know, we're, we're, we're sitting here looking at our communications because we like getting our communications very well. But I would just want to make sure that we're clear that not every single public statement is going to get communi communication in a subsequent meeting. They're not guaranteed that. I don't want anybody to think that just because you come and make a comment means we, we will give you any sort of an address later. It's not appropriate all the time. So right. that was my little right. caveat. And, it's, and we do the board's business until we're finished doing our business. And when that lasts till midnight, then it's going to last till midnight. So I'm not sure where we're going to try and police ourselves on something like that as well. Good point, Ruthann. Good point. I think it, yeah, it needs to be, doesn't have to be a drug out. Uh, it, it's just simply, we respond to people anyway, but a lot of times it's a private response when it's been a public comment. I, I get that issue that, I mean, uh, it's not that we never respond to people when they come in and, and, and talk to us. Oftentimes that response is prepared by administration and sent and sent pretty quickly, um, but we never get we never complete the loop back to people that might be following us on YouTube, and would like to know what that response was. So I think that's a I think that's a real good a real good thought. Anything else? I definitely agree because it's about the community that we're serving and even though we can't do the immediate response there's some way if we're going to do these changes that the public will need to know it'll have to be written up so that they understand what we're doing sure. so that we don't hurt feelings so that's all I ask is just make sure there's clarification when we do it All right. Anything else? Thanks. I appreciate, I appreciate the discussion. That definitely gives me some guidance. And um, considering that we don't, we did not have um, citizen statements tonight, gives us a little bit of time to to reflect on this a little bit more. If you have any other ideas, please uh, please feel free to let me know. Do you think it requires um, a change in that policy that you just shared with us, or do you think it? it it's just an implementation of the policy. I think it's just an implementation of the policy, really. I think that it, it falls in that concept, I think, falls in line with the policy. Um, I did, I, again, the board agreement and the communication soon from the board um, were the two that seemed to be the most about how the board communicates with each other and with the public. Um, and so I just wanted to have those in front of you as, a, as kind of a reminder and a talking piece. And you can take a look at those. and. If you have other thoughts, um, we can bring it up next time, too. All right. Great. Okay. Um, after that comes reports and discussions. We have none tonight. We have a consent agenda. And on our consent agenda this evening are the minutes of the June 19th, 2018 business meeting and the August 7th uh, study session. We have June bills and checks um, that we uh, did advance approval on in, in June, but this is circling back. Uh, education fund bills in the amount of uh, 638,000, operations and maintenance fund bills in the amount of 307,000, transportation fund. I'm assuming this is a large end of the year because this is an unusual amount for transportation uh, in the amount of 242,000, working cash bonds in the amount of 58,000, uh, life safety uh, 6,000, and payroll of uh, a little over 4 million. Uh, July bills and checks, education fund bill in the amount of 791000 operations and maintenance fund bills in the amount of 352000 transportation a more reasonable $400, working, 
working cash bonds in the amount of 2.1, 2.2 million. Uh, and that's, um, a lot of this is tied up in the Yankee Ridge uh, work. Uh, tort funds in the amount of 287,000. Life safety levy, 55,000. Payroll, 3.2 million. And adult education bills in the amount of 170,000. There were some interfund loan payments, and I'm assuming this, the from and to is reversed on this, on our agenda. And so it was uh, 1 million that went from O&M to working cash. Yes, so the, the from and to is reversed here on the sheet of paper. So 500000 from transportation fund back into working cash, 500000 from IMRF back into working cash, and 30000 from TORT back into working cash. We have various personnel items this evening. We have an um, administrative personnel item. Uh, we have approval of the 2018 high school graduates and approval of a new account activity for class of 2022. Are there any of the personnel items that need to be pulled off and looked at? The administrative. I wanna okay. Make sure to what do you wish to say? Go ahead. Ready Should we me. pull it off the consent agenda? I'd like What's to introduce the a new the administrator now or, or later, either way. Let's do it okay. as a separate one. All right, so we'll eliminate 11.5 uh, from our consent agenda and add it to the individual action items. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Member Carter? Yes. Member Hall? Yes. Member Flosky? Yes. Member Fisher votes yes. Vice President Rollins Gay yes. and President Demet? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, for individual action items this evening, we have uh, gifts. Uh, Christie Clinic, Illinois Marathon, and uh, Jan Seeley working with that donated uh, $1,050 to Urbana Early Childhood. Our band of Pops Orchestra donated $1,031 to the uh, district music program. Maribel Lucero, Lucero, or Lucero, Lucero donated $603.29 to the district for unaccompanied uh, minors. Uh, we have several in, enrolled in our school. And Abbas Aran Manash of Urbana donated, I hope I pronounced that right, donated an Armstrong clarinet worth $150 to the Evelyn Burnett Underwood Scholarship Program. Is there a motion to receive the gifts and send thank you notes? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Uh, our next would be our individual action item taken off our consent agenda, which is the administrative personnel item. Kathy or Don? Yeah. Um, I am happy to get to introduce our final building administrative hire for this, this school year. Um, LaSonia Reed is our new assistant principal at Urbana Early Childhood School. Um, this is a half-time grant-funded position, um, new this year. Prior to coming to Urbana, Ms. Reed served as principal intern and lead teacher with West Harvey Dixmore School, District 147. She filled those posts since June of 2016. She's had several teaching positions with Chicago Public Schools and two charter school networks. She's taught most grades at the elementary level, including third and fourth grade at CPS and kindergarten through second at different charter schools. She's held a lead teacher position at several institutions, as long with being an instructional and professional development leader teacher, mentor, and coach, and curriculum writer during her time with West Harvey Dixmore Schools. Ms. Tony Reed's academic career includes earning an education specialist degree in educational leadership and administration with National Lewis University. Her Master of Science degree is in elementary education from Quincy University. Um, and from the University of Chicago, Ms. Reed earned a Bachelor of Arts in English and she has an Associate of Science from Malcolm X Community College. She's a member of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society and has served on English language arts, math, and PBIS committees. Please help me welcome Ms. Lasonia Reed. At this time, I would just like to say thank you um, very much for extending the position to me. I'm extremely honored, and thus far, everyone from Dr. Owen to Dr. Bindham have been extremely welcoming. Even I didn't know Dr. <laughs> Owen was the superintendent when I was walking around one of the workshops and he just started talking and um, telling me about the workshops that I would be a good fit to go in and, and observe. And um, everyone has just been extremely welcoming and 
I, I don't have any words to express how I am to be in the company of such smart, friendly, passionate people about what they do. And um, today was our first day um, of students coming in for school at the early childhood center, and it was it was a great day. And yesterday we had open house, and that went well as well, just to see all of the effort and the things that the teachers did to prepare for that moment. And then also I want to uh, mention that Chris is awesome with getting me up and running and being patient with me as I become accustomed to how we do things here. And um, also I must mention Sylvia, the secretary, is just <laughs> extremely helpful. And before I can ask for anything, she's already there assisting me. So just thank you. I, I enjoy being here already. I can't see myself going back anywhere else. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no call for a future uh, special or executive meeting. Um, FOIA report. So, oh, yeah, oh, we have to vote on oh, that I'm action sorry, item. Vote. I'm so, <laughs> thank yes, you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I'm really not with it here tonight. Thank you. We almost didn't uh, do the deal here. So, yeah, we need a roll call on this because it's uh, spending money. Grant money, yeah. Member Carter. Yes. Member Hall. Yes. Member Pulaski. Yes. Member Fisher votes yes. Vice President Rollins, yes. yay. And President Demo. Yes. Motion's carried. Welcome aboard. Now, oh. Maybe. Now we're ready for FOIA report. Yeah, so we had uh, two FOIAs that have um, been fulfilled, and uh, the first one is from Smart Procure. Uh, if you recognize that name, they're almost quarterly. Uh, they ask for the purchase order number, um, light item details, light item quantity, um, item price, and vendor ID, name, address, and contact person of um, every uh, purchase that we make. Um, and so that's one that is actually available on our district website. And uh, um, they, uh, they receive a link to that. Um, the News Gazette has also uh, requested a review. Um, it's a review of a previous request, all written in electronic communication from August 1st, 2017 to May 17th, 2018 on all Board of Education members uh, John Dimmitt, Ann Hall, Benita Rollins-Gay, Ruth Ann Fisher, Brenda Carter, Peggy Patton, and Paul Pulaski with the words Urbana Middle School or UMS, Urbana High School or UHS, Discipline, Fighting, Student, Dean, Deans, and all written electronic communication from August 1st, 2017 to May 17th, 2018 from all board members, uh, Board of Education members with the words Urbana Middle School, um, Urbana High School or UHS, Discipline, Fighting, Student, Dean, or Deans. Okay. Um, any, uh, you don't want to, no, oh, it's down there at the right. bottom, I went around it. Yeah. Superintendent's report. Yeah, so uh, superintendent's report, we had our um, first full day of school for almost all of our students. And when I say that, I mean that tomorrow um, we have all kindergartners. The first two days we do half and half. Um, the first half of the alphabet comes, and then the second day the second half of the alphabet comes. Um, and that's to help the kindergartners get acclimated to a new space. Um, and then tomorrow, all the kindergartners will be there and our two new full day early childhood classrooms at uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Elementary School. And I will say, I, uh, as I was walking through the building yesterday, um, I got a chance to see those rooms uh, first from the uh, building principal, Ms. Kayla Lewandowski, who was thrilled to show off um, the, the new classrooms that were being set up by the early childhood teachers. Uh, and then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Chris Fowles was there checking in on her teachers, making sure that they were all set and that um, they had the proper support that they needed. Uh, we're very lucky to have uh, two um, teachers who have been uh, really leaders at early childhood, the early childhood school, um, uh, volunteer to move over to those, those full day programs and so we're very excited about that um, 
today, tonight, was a, um, an open house at the high school uh, where they grilled out and, um, and they had um, time for families to walk around the school, talk to teachers. Um, it was very informal and, um, and there are curriculum nights and other open houses coming up soon. Um, and uh, Principal Brown was already talking to me about wanting to do a kind of a town hall forum on the new um, systems and strategies of the multi-tiered system of support um, and have kind of a question and answer that she was going to do to be scheduled, but uh, that will be coming up soon. Uh, tomorrow is our last, that's Wednesday, is our last family and community forum on the strategic plan uh, topics, and that topic will be um, the management, budget, and infrastructure of the district. Um, and that will be at 5.30 for snacks, right? 5.30 for snacks? Six? Six for snacks, 6.30 is start time? 5.30. Thank you. Um, 5.30 for snacks and 6 for start time, and that will be at Urbana Neighborhood Connection Center, and there will be child care provided. Um, and so if you want to come early and just socialize, you can get there at 5.30. Program and activities won't start until 6. Um, in addition to that, um, we've gotten some feedback from a number of families uh, that they really enjoyed having those opportunities to come in and talk to administrators and teachers um, about the strategic plan, about vision, about mission. Um, and so we're going to uh, pilot something this fall. And bless you. Um, and bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, before each study session, so before our September 4th study session, uh, starting at around 5.30 here in this space, uh, we'll do what we're going to call a tiger talk. And we'll just have light refreshments, have it be kind of open forum. Uh, we'll invite a variety of administrators um, and teacher leaders from across the district. And we'll just hopefully increase attendance at board meetings, but also have a time to talk. If people don't want to stick around for the board meeting, they'll have an opportunity to talk to us and, um, and just talk more about the strategic plan. Some of it will be slightly structured around the same things that we've done with our family forums, family and community forums, um, in terms of strengths, weaknesses, and, and uh, kind of hopes and dreams. Um, but part of it's just going to be very open and, and just a time, time to talk and get to know us. So uh, we're planning on doing that um, starting on the next um, September 4th board meeting. I did want to uh, say one thing about the calendar, and I'll just turn the page over. Um, just because this is coming up before the next um, board meeting, on Monday, September 3rd, obviously, is no school uh, because it's Labor Day. And I always give a shout out to uh, the Urbana Tigers Marching Band because they will be marching in the Labor Day Parade, uh, which is right here in Urbana um, and goes, in fact, right past Washington School. It starts at Lincoln Square Mall on Broadway, goes down Broadway, uh, turns east on Washington, and heads out Washington to um, Brookings and, and Prairie Park. So uh, I hope everyone can make it out and see um, not only celebrate Labor Day Parade, but um, our Tigers marching band as well. That's it. OK, board reports. Any board reports this evening? Okay. Um, I had the pleasure of going to the uh, street fair that was on Silver and Vodder in Urbana, and I was very impressed with everything that um, city leaders had pulled together along with community members. There were several people out there um, with different booths offering help. Um, <clears throat> also, fun activities. There was a barber out there giving haircuts. Um, they had face painting, they had some different um, painting and different crafts and games. They had a big blow up slide. Um, it was just fun to walk around and talk to families in Urbana and actually students. The students actually went to a variety of Urbana schools. It wasn't all just one school that they went to. And it, it was very nice. Um, the mayor was out there along with several other organizers who would help to put this on. And apparently this was the second year that this had been um, put on. So it had been planned and implemented. And 
it was a really good turnout. Um, when we were there, it was kind of towards the middle, so there was quite a few people there. They were actually, um, I talked to one of the organizers, and she said they were really working hard with a lot of the landlords in that area to uh, try to cut down on some of the crime that's been happening in these apartment buildings and around the neighborhood. So uh, it, it was a, a good time. Benita went with me. We went together. It was fun. Public health was out there also um, offering different things. And um, hot. Yes. So it was nice to see everybody partnering. Unit 4 was out there because uh, Orlando had purchased property in Urbana and working with the family. So it was a combination of everybody and Sam Smith taking pictures. So it was really, really great. Okay. Other board reports this evening? All I want to know, uh, I just want to thank uh, the School Foundation for having an event that now I can attend that's at 7 in the morning because my <laughs> evenings are tied up. So I will be going. I think Kelly is new, so it would be good for us to really support. Thursday morning. Huh? Thursday, Thursday, morning. Thursday morning at 7. So I plan to go, and I told them I have to be at work at 8, but I'll stay for 7.50 because Kelly, I think her – implementations and she's so go get it and let's do it she really likes fundraisers and I just want to be there to support her and welcome her to her new position I'm planning on being there as well any other board reports this evening it's the beginning of the school year so things will get rolling next time I think all right uh, with that, we're ready for a motion to adjourn. To motion to adjourn to executive session for personnel purposes. No action to follow the meeting. She moved. Do I have to repeat it? No, no. I heard a motion and a second. Um, ro this requires roll, roll call, call, I believe. Yes. Member Carter? Yes. Member Hall? Yes. Member Pulaski? Yes. Member Fisher votes yes. Vice President Rollins Gay? Yes. President Demet? Yes. Uh, we're adjourned to executive session. Thanks, everyone.